Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, yeah, uh, yet another message. Um, Lord's kind of bringing this to mind. I did a video on Ezekiel chapter 22, verse, well, in Ezekiel 22, but uh, this specific verse I want to point out is verse 26. It says, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have no put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. You know, I think about this. God brought to mind that, you know, he brings to mind the uh, prodigal son and how, you know, the son wanted his inheritance now. So, you know, our inheritance through Jesus Christ is salvation. Now, you know, the greedy son wanted his inheritance, so the father gave it to him. Uh, but then he went out into the world and abused it, used it, used it up. And... Like he lived good, a good life for a while, but then what was he stuck with? He was stuck with what the servants fed the swine. Now, I don't know what they fed them back then, but a lot of the times, you know, I hear people beating them slop. Like, um, Food scraps, table scraps, is in rotten, rotten food. You know, me growing up in a farming community and uh, raising hogs myself, our family did. I mean, occasionally we would give them the table scraps, but mostly we would give them feed corn and they would root around but like it's that kind of you know I can relate to but I was thinking about the priests that are doing this they're violating the law profaning the holy things and put no difference between that they are I was thinking about the churches that you know just teach or are feeding those that just receive salvation, but they give give those who have those who are kind of worldly, they like want to go back out into the world even after receiving salvation. They want they are happy to receive a sloppy doctrine. It's not filling. I mean, some of it's good, but it's a sloppy doctrine, and they're and. To put it plainly, they're still rolling around in their own filth. Look, there's bits and pieces of good stuff. You know, it's almost like a buffet where you never know what you're going to get, but it's all mixed together. No real substance. No, the real thing. It's all table scraps. But messy, sloppy. And they're still rolling around in their filth, in their sin. And I think it's important that we pray for them, that we um, keep the door open for them, waiting for them to return to receive the meat of the truth. You know, keep praying for them to return, to come back, to, you know, pray for that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit would prick their hearts and the Spirit of and the spirit of revelation would come to their mind and give them understanding that, and give them revelation that this isn't right. This is something about this is wrong. 
I'm not getting enough. I'm not feeling fulfilled. I'm still in my sin. You no, know, Holy Spirit, convict them on a righteousness. That needs to be our prayer. As for those who claim to be saved under the name of Christ, wanting that salvation, but learning a sloppy doctrine and still rolling around in their own filth, in the filth of this world. So we need to pray and praying for them. We need to be, you know, praying for them to come back to have that realization that this isn't right. So that we can, like it says in the scripture, you know, we need to put a difference. I mean, even in this nation, in the world, there's uh, really they profane his profane the the holy things. They have violated the, the the word of God. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. They have showed neither have they showed difference between the clean and the unclean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath and I am profaned among them. So they have hid their eyes eyes from their Sabbath, the you know the holy days, like Sundays. Like, you know, truthfully, the Sabbath is not on Sunday. Sunday is the first day. This is the day God rested. Or Well, he rested on the seventh day, which is Saturday. The Jews celebrate that as the Sabbath, and that's really, truly the Sabbath day is Saturday. Because if we go, even go to Spanish, it's, it's Sabado or something like that, Sabbath. But um, they don't, they've had their eyes from the Sabbath. They don't, they don't observe it. And they profane God. And they, Profane the name of God because, you know, you have a bunch of the Christians who are still living worldly, learning a sloppy doctrine, living in their own filth of the, the filth of this world, who are supposed to be sheep, but are rolling around with the swine, eating the slop, rolling up in the muck and mire. And... God wants to pull them out of it. They, they want. He wants to clean them up. He wants to have them truly saved and know to eat the good, the good meat of the truth. Learning the difference between the holy and the faint, profane, to show the, to know the difference between the clean and the unclean, and to observe His holy days. To, you know. Make it, uh, make it uh, a holy day. Make it uh, a set apart day to, excuse me, to worship God in spirit and in truth. To learn the word, to fellowship together with, uh, with your brethren in the, in the body of Christ. You know. When I was a kid, I know there are some that still do it today, but they are there used to be more uh, businesses like restaurants and stores and uh, many other businesses that would observe Sunday. Say, "Oh, we're not going to be open today. It's Sunday." Made it a set apart day today to close, so everybody can go see worship the Lord. And we've kind of gotten away from that. And some. There are many companies like, uh, there are many companies like um, factories or, uh, you know, yeah, factories or, um, you know, even restaurants or stores, they're still open on Sundays and they don't observe God's holy day. Observe it to set it apart to go worship the Lord because they don't know the Lord. Now you got Hobby Lobby, who observes that day. You have Chick Fil A, who observes that day. You know they hear a lot of backlash because they're not open. They want people want to eat there or shop there, but they're closed. They personally don't care. Like they're they're sorry that they're not open that day, but you know they want to observe Sabbath. They're the set apart day 
that they set apart for God so that their employees can go worship the Lord and to rest. Because the Lord rested on the seventh day. And it also gives them time with their families, which is important as well. Well, first God, then your family. And so we need to get to that, back to that. So we need to be praying for the lost church, to be honest with you, with what it's called. The lost church, the lost sheep that are rolling in the muck and mire, eating a sloppy doctrine, and not getting any real substance. They're still hungry. They're still not being fulfilled. They think they're living it up because it's so grand. They get to do what they want. They're, the doctrine they're learning fits in with their beliefs and with their ideology. But it's really not. They're starving. They're not getting, they're malnourished. They're not getting that strong meat. I mean, it will be as if they were drinking milk again. It's like eating candy. Eating candy and not feeling fulfilled. You can possibly even get sick to your stomach. But then you like a dog and return to your own vomit. Like you eat so much of it, get sick of it, and get sick from it, and then vomit back up and then go back to it. Like a dog, like Jesus said. Um, but also, the world is receiving table scraps from us. Like he was talking to the woman that was an unbeliever, saying something about um, a dog receive a dog uh, gets table scraps from the master, or table scraps from the master, something like that. I bring, God brought that to mind. No, that's what the world is getting. Like they get bits and pieces from the Lord's table from us like we sit at the Lord's table they get the little bit they whether they know it or not they are sitting under under us because we're sitting at the table we're sitting with at the table with the master and they need to be getting t the table scraps so they'll want more so if we share the gospel then they'll want more we need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be praying for the lost. They don't need to be they, even the lost. I'm like we might like the, the unbeliever in back in the day was considered like a dog or a swine, like it was unclean, but mostly like like a dog. And it wanted the scraps from the master's table. It's hungry and needed something and needed substance. And we're the only ones that can give it to them. So we're going to be praying for the lost. Invite them to the master's table. Give them a little, give them a little crumb or give them a little bit of the crumbs from the master's table and they'll be hungry for more. We invite them to come sit at the master's table. Share the gospel with them, the good news of the gospel. And uh, be praying for the lost in the church that are eating a sleepy, uh, a sloppy, eating of a sloppy doctor, rolling in the muck and mud. Might even consider the the worldly people lurk in the sloppy doctrine of the world, like it's from their own personal beliefs, ideologies, and. Uh, well, personal beliefs, ideologies, and part of it is scripture that they've gotten confused or the devil has confused and twisted it. So it's a mixture of it. So it's sloppy, what they're learning. So, but yet they're still, they are still um, rolling on their own filth. So we need to be praying for the lost, the lost in the church, and praying that they gain revelation of the truth of Jesus Christ, and, and, and you know, coming back to the truth and to truth and righteousness. And, you know, the United States is a melting pot. You know, different pieces here and there. But, you know, when we're together, you know, different cultures, different 
different cultures that are different, different ethnicities. Um, but you know, we are united in Christ. We are one body. Um, and one culture, which is kingdom culture or Jesus culture, whatever you want to say it. One body, one blood, one spirit. You know, we see, um, Jesus receives all who, the, who, would, who would come to him. Who all, he says, come to him who are all burdened and heavy laden. You know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, prodigal son's father ran to him with open arms. You know, we just need to have open arms to the for the lost, waiting for them to come home, waiting for them to come back to church, come back to the truth and righteousness, and live a life of righteousness and holiness, and repent of their sin, whether people believe it or not. Repentance means change of mind, change of heart, metanoia, when in Greek, but a malamine is a godly sorrow, like you want to be in right standing with God and then back in fellowship with the Lord. So we need to be praying for the lost in the church and the lost in the world to receive a prick by Holy Spirit in their heart, to have a humbleness to Humbleness to the heart. You know, Jesus said, Blessed is the meek. Blessed is the pure in heart. You know, we just to be praying for the lost in the church, praying for the lost in this world, um, sharing the gospel where we can, and praying to the Lord that we have encounters, that we can share that, share his gospel with the lost in the church and in the world so they can come back to the path of righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name.